in Japan. Yeah. All right, here we go. The head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, is. Darvin Ham, joining us again. So, Darvin, let's start right here. It's good to see you again. All right, so it was a little bit more than a year ago when Al and I were up in that corner room over there yes, when they indeed. had your introductory press conference. And then last year we were right here doing it. What's it like for you, like a whole year going by, getting hired, going through your first season as an NBA head coach? How different is it this time around? It's great. I mean, I think uh, – there's a lot less unknowns. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> There's a lot of good problems. We've got a team full of great players. And so uh, can't wait to get a chance to start trying to figure out a rotation, you know, once we get into training camp and all of that. Um, but, you know, last year was a lot of heavy lifting, I mean, <laughs> to put it mildly. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, trying to reestablish the competitive spirit, the competitive level that this franchise has always represented. And so uh, that, w- that was big, and I felt like we were able to do that. It felt like three seasons in one. I bet. You know, pre-trade deadline, trade deadline, and then the whole play-in through the playoff part. So I just felt like, you know, obviously it didn't end the way we wanted it to, but what we did do, we reestablished who we are, being back at the top of the food chain, and I think it's setting us up the trampoline to even a higher level. Darvin, like you mentioned, the heavy lifting last year. Obviously, you know, you knew there would be challenges as the head guy, right? That that, that one seat over is a million miles, right? For sure. Did, did did you think like at any point like, man, this is even more than I thought that first year in that chair? Nah, I, I kind of I kind of anticipated it uh, coming in and, and trying to figure things out. And believe me, it was no fun starting off 0-1-5, 0-1-6, 2-1-10, right. whatever. But at the end of the day, like you got to go through the valley to start making your way up the mountaintop. And, you know, I'm just thankful for having a governor like Jeannie Buss, a partner like Rob Palinka, constantly in my corner, constantly giving me encouragement, um, actually seeing how the guys, even though we came up short, had some unfortunate finishes to, to some big games early, the competitive nature was starting to build and be consistent. And so I knew as long as we had that, we would be okay. You know, we would figure things out as the season wore on. And, you know, that's exactly what happened. And so this year I'm, I'm super-duper excited. Uh, we were able to retain our core guys, bring them back. A couple of them got extensions um, and the new acquisitions that we were able to find. And the guys we drafted are two ways. I'm, I'm excited about the whole team top to bottom. Mm-hmm. Coach Darvin Ham taking some time to join us here on the Travis and Sliwa show. Um, Coach, it's interesting because – we had Christian Wood on here, and he talked about um, his relationship with you. You've heard a lot of the players talk about the relationship that you have with them. And, you know, I guess trying to figure out, is that something that you knew when you took the role? Um, have you always just had that connection with the players? Has there just been that ability, maybe because you were a former player, you could see it from a little bit different of a perspective? But it seems to be a very, very strong strength of yours. Just love for you to talk about that. Yeah, man, I, you know, I think it's just my upbringing. I come from a strong family system. Um, grew up in a really tough place, east side Saginaw. And just growing up and, uh, and understanding, never had anything easy or given to me. Had to work for everything and got into this league as an undrafted player. Um, I was fortunate enough to spend almost a decade in the league as a player, win a championship in Detroit. And the type of player I was, I think, just – it reflected my character in terms of, you know, whatever I need to do to be, contribute to the group, that's what it was. So I carry that when I deal with my guys the same way as an assistant coach. Um, and spending four years in the D League when I started out on my coaching track, I think it's, you know, those are a lot of humbling experiences. So just understanding that I want them to know that I'm there for them. I've been in their shoes. Uh, I wasn't good enough to be arrogant and be standoffish in the locker room. I was a glue guys they call them um just a guy willing to do whatever it took to help my team and so i try to give that emit that type of energy and that type of aura to my guys and and just each and every one of them um just treat everyone fair and 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 have an open door policy so if there's anything that they ever need to communicate with me talk to me about questions they may have you know we handle it accordingly and directly and uh, i think players respect that you know as long as you're truthful with them they may not like what you say, but they'll respect what you say. Head coach of the Lakers, Darvin Ham, joining us here on Travis and Sliwa. And Alan, and I were joking, coach, that 
every guy that comes by is just I, I get it it's the nba guys are big i understand that but this is even by nba standards a big team how do you take advantage of that how do you put all of this size to use you know it's not it, not only the size it's the skill sets mm-hmm. you know we have a, a ton of skilled guys that that we can move around and can play a, a variety of different positions um I'm, I, I'm i'm excited about it we can play small we can play fast. We can play big, what I call the power ball lineup. And, you know, obviously when it comes to the end of the game, normally, you know, who's ever rocking and rolling and, and, and has found that good rhythm, not just individually but collectively, um, they'll finish the game. But the key is that all of these guys know that it's a long process. What When you're going after what we're going after in terms of, competing for a championship there's something you don't have to constantly talk about you have to be about it and do your work every day and understand the professionalism that's involved because it's a nine-month process from october to june so damn near all these guys may have a number called at some point in the Mm -hmm. season and i like i call it the lonnie walker theory now like (laughs) you know he had gotten hurt after we made the 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 deal at the deadline and he kind of fell out of the rotation but never once I'm sure it's frustrating that he wasn't directly in the lineup out of rotation a little bit, but he stayed, working, he, he stayed working, he stayed ready, and yeah. stayed positive. Yeah. And that's a lesson to, to us all. And, and just when you win as a group, everyone gets taken care of individually. And I, that can't be overstated enough. Like, when you win as a group, good things happen to everyone involved individually. So we just have to know that it's going to take all hands on deck throughout this process of nine months to get to where we're trying to get to. You're listening to KSPN Los Angeles. Um, Darvin, uh, I'm, you lose the series to the Denver Nuggets. Uh, every game is competitive. Yep. Y- you look back on that. What, what can you take away from that series? And, and give Denver all the credit in the world, but I, I think the way you guys did play them, it's not that it seemed like it was completely, you know, two, two teams on different sides. Um, what can you take away from that series that you think that you can bring into this year? I just think, the, you know, Self-inflicted wounds. Um, we can't do things. The, the team, you look around the league and everyone, there's not going to be many nights off. Uh, even the teams that's quote-unquote at the bottom of the totem pole will give you a run for your money, especially when you're a Laker. When they're playing the Lakers, everyone seems to play far above and beyond what their individual skill set is. So we have to be ready for that to get, to get everyone's punch, best punch. And coming out of that series, it just I just thought about the self-inflicted wounds, you know, not being great in transition defense, um, giving up untimely offensive rebounds to them. They had guys that step up and made plays and made shots. We missed a ton of layups in that series. But just that self-inflicted wounds, we have to do everything in our power to make sure we don't do anything to hurt ourselves. Mistakes are going to happen. I'm, I'm well aware of that. But. We can't miss point-blank shots. We can't uh, turn the ball over. We have to sprint back when a shot is taken to avoid giving up easy transition buckets or being off balance with our defense. And we got to finish the defense by defensive rebounding. But that was the biggest lesson, and that's the one that will be preached starting tomorrow. Head coach of the Lakers, Darvin Ham, getting ready to start his second season as the head coach, looking for championship number 18 along the way here in Los Angeles. Coach, always a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Appreciate Thanks for having me. Thank you. Got you got it. I, I can tell you this. 